so that's nice. Awesome. Oh. Beautiful, filled with light. Yeah. Well, let, let me let me turn my camera around. I'm I'm right now in the middle of an installation. We're having a show on Friday. It's um Eve Moussard is a dancer and he's gonna do a recital and also Matt. Max Radadada will be showing his art. So the messy stuff around, I'll I'll show you what that looks like, just so you get an idea of what it looks like. Let me turn my camera around here if I can. There we go. So that window straight ahead is where you'd be performing under the chandelier. Oh, nice. Yeah, and and right now there's a bunch of Max stuff. These are towers of cups that will go from the floor to that wooden bar up there. And this is his, what he does performance art. So this is like a puppet show contraption that he has. Wow. And, <laughs> and uh, he's a wonderful photographer as well. These are gigantic Polaroid photographs. What? Real, real photographs, 20, I think they're 20 by 24. And they're really beautiful. Oh my God. Uh, yeah. So, um, and then there'll be another installation here. So, we're just in the beginning of getting ready for Friday for this event. And here's a table with more. Here's a, a photograph of the towers, of the cup towers, which will go next to the sculpture. Wow. But they're really beautiful. Um, I love that. Yeah. Oh, but we're here. We're here to talk about you. So let me turn my camera back around and start going with that. Okay, turn my camera. Okay. I did have a question though. Go ahead. Okay, cause I never really knew about your origin story. Cause I've been knowing you for a long time but I never really knew what, like how you started playing music and stuff. Oh, okay. Well, I I was not I. I was not a musician at all, or never sang or played any instruments or did anything like that, growing up. And when I was a senior in college, studying fine art, I was like, oh, music. You know, you can put you know, a sound here and a sound there. And, you know, just like a drawing, put a, a line here and a line there and you have music. And so that kind of just, I just jumped right in and started performing without knowing how to do anything. So it's been a process of like, I was actually doing open mics and, you know, things when I had, you know, just started to, to toy with the idea, um, you know, but then it, then it took over. Wow. Okay, that's cool. You're like the, I, there was a, I can't remember where it was, but it's like, they were describing somebody, they're like, they're like the wind. They come from nowhere and they go everywhere. And it's what? Like, Patrick <laughs> Swayze had the, she's like the wind song from Deep Dirty. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just, I just was like, I, you know, now that I think, but I have no clue. I have no clue where you started. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a great place to start, you know, from art. And I was teaching art to children, so I kind of have that perspective of put materials in front of someone and let them pl play with it and enjoy it, and then they'll fall in love with making, and then it takes over. And so that's what happened with music. Wow. I took private art lessons as, as a kid and that's what and I was uh it, I was like a little kid and then I in the class was like teenage girls so and yeah. I had an older sister so I really like was like wow they're so they're so deep she wrote with a uh, pen on her upper thigh she had like shorts on and she wrote oh. uh, something about like being suicidal or something it was like the first time oh. I seen writing like that was on a leg and, and pen I was like oh wow Teenagers are deep. Were, were were you intimidated or or was it like I was like I was like their little pet. I was like they're like oh wow they let a kid into this class and we're like these cool teenagers and uh, <laughs> that what there's a kid here I guess now I was like yeah. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> so did that influence you? You feel like that having that experience? 
Oh yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, yeah, you know, I mean, that's all we really need is to get like, uh, you know, have experiences with art and, and for it to be very open and, and cause it's stimulating, it's stimulating yeah. just to make. So that's all you really need is the opportunity to do it. And someone who's not, you know, saying you have to do it this way, you have to do it that way. Um, Cause it's play and the play will evolve into work. Yeah. Yeah. It's so a surprise is just sit at the table with some stuff and like, woohoo. Yeah. Well, the, one of the things that I, I've always liked about um, your work, Mary, because I know I, I knew you before I knew Yanni and Yanni is not exactly new for um, I mean, for those people who are, are watching, uh, I met Mary Sullivan. Uh, what, like 15 years ago, maybe a long time. 10, yeah. 10 to 15, maybe in Rhode Island. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So. And one of the things that when I when I started to see your work again online and it was just Mary Sullivan was that it was very raw. The music was very raw and uh, it seemed like each piece was just developing as you made it rather than, you know, preconceived. And it took a lot of time to get there. A lot of times you would record something, you know, very soon after writing it. A lot of my stuff is improvisation. Right. I just finished a song a day for Lent, and last year we did. I did. We wrote together a lot, and I would sit and we'd meditate, and then I'd write on pen and paper. And then this year I just did pure because it's part of my. I feel like that's like really where I get really connected with the spirit. It's like, mm -hmm. and things come through, and I'm like, whoa. I don't know where what that was, but uh, yeah. But then you know, it can come like you said, it can turn into work later, where you're you really are finessing and moving things around and stuff. But I would say pretty, we're pretty primal. Like I don't really do a lot of editing. I not mm -hmm. that there's anything wrong with that. It's just not my style as much. Right. Well, that's that's one of the things that draws me to the music and uh, makes me makes me happy to share it with other people. You know, and to have you at, at Artist Abbey and to have people experience that. My friend Tamer, who fi who filmed your, he filmed a part of your show when you were both there. But Lindsay, you were sick. I have day. my period, and uh, sorry about that. <laughs> no, no, hey, that, that it it happens, and and so Lindsay was resting, and Mary did the show at my house which was it was uh just a living room and i'd call it artist abbey and and now we're here in the in the real gallery in a bigger space um but it's not totally different i don't know if you see behind me there's a bed and if if you're both staying the night you have a place to crash oh wow right oh. so this is Artist Abbey, and it's supposed to be a haven for artists and to support what they do and to, you know, give them opportunities to try things that wouldn't be allowed other places or, you know, are not sellable or, you know, whatever it is. Um, and so, you know, that's just a bed inside of the inside of the gallery. We used to do a howdy house and it was nice. my bedroom was living was in the living room and I had a big bed and we had shows there and one of the big premises or the best part of it was my shows were unjuried the only thing was like we, we only had one show a month and okay. came through town and it was on that date and in Rhode Island wow. yeah I got this idea because in Rhode Island they had this very nice venue called AS220 one of the most long-standing, well-respected venues in Rhode Island, and it was on jury. And wow. it's like, you don't get, no one gets rejected. You just have to wait your turn. That's you know? amazing. I, I haven't heard of that. And I think that's, that's powerful. That's really good. And uh, yeah. actually with the whole art and noise or art thing is like RISD, Rhode Island School of Design. Right. Uh, they, that basically spawned noise rock i personally will make the claim that rhode island is the state that made noise rock and right. 
it was because all these visual artists started making sonic art. And so we have claimed the band Lightning Bolt, <laughs> which is like yeah. one of the best noise rock bands of all time. And uh, my niece and nephew, I teach them guitar lessons on Zoom and stuff. And I'm like, okay, so let's listen to some music so you can get a little music appreciation class. And then I play them a lightning bolt and I'm like so what did you guys think of that and they're like all I heard was noise <laughs> <laughs> well, that. they'll, re they'll remember that 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 thought and 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 really it's like an emotional thing when you're young and you experience something that doesn't totally make sense it kind of makes a it makes an impression and I think it, it leaves room for like coming into it later yeah, just it's one of those things like the four minute mile. Nobody thought it was possible. And then one guy did it. Nobody had ever done it before recorded. One guy did it. And then the net by the that same time the next year, like a hundred people had did it, done it because they knew it was possible. And you know, right. so kids, it's like I teach them chords, I teach them structure and stuff, but I'm like, I just want you to know that this is possible. You can do whatever you want, you know? Right. Right, that this this is also music. Yes, it's it's an option. Yeah. Um, so I would love to hear how Yanni developed into a band, and then maybe to talk a little bit about you know how you, um, how you approach making your music. You know, and uh, and then I'm sure I'll have more questions. Uh, Mary writes the songs and then I play the drums to it and then it's not the, the best at, in the beginning and then after a while it's awesome. My neighbors, well, I, oh I was just gonna say my neighbors today they were talking to me about the music and I was like I don't you know to me when I stand outside it doesn't sound too loud I hope it doesn't bother you too much they're like no but we will say your drummer has gotten a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, we really like it. It's really good, but it's a lot better than it was. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Well, that it's like you you fall into like more of a unity, right? Between the between oh, the individuals. And Lynn's and I, I think we found our group right away. Like I still remember that first time we played and it just kind of sunk right in. You know, and a lot of it has to do with like I think we have a lot of similar references of like bands we like and listen to and things like that and taste of preferences, but it's also it's just like weird magic, you know. Um, so that always helps. And you know, like I'm a primal writer. I really don't do a lot of editing and stuff like that. And I feel like Lynn's is a pretty primal player in the sense of she's not like, you know about what time signature is this and but 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 you know it's like we're right real just room it, it helps not 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 having that that info i don't, <laughs> I don't know I don't, right okay all right <laughs> um yeah keep going i i, I had i was going to ask you something really quick about want, the funny thing that's kind of ironic is i actually did take Less guitar, uh, drum lessons for many years when I was in high school and middle school, and then I went to Berkeley College of Music. Um, when I was still in high school, I took summer classes there, and I went into their bookstore and I was getting their textbooks, which are sheet music for drums, and I was playing them while I was in high school, and I okay. loved, you know, all the crazy time signatures and stuff like that. But the thing is, it's like, who cares if it doesn't? feel good <laughs> right so right well it's yeah it seems like your your process is accumulative in in terms of you know you you make something that is very immediate spontaneous spontaneous improvisational and then it, it goes on to affect the next piece so when you're saying that you're not about refining just that one piece, it, it's happening more, you know, it's happening in the long, in the long run. Yeah, I, so I used to be called Sister Mary. Uh, many reasons for that name, but one of them is 
I started the, the early on in my songwriting career when I got really conscientious about it. I said, instead of trying to write like a good song, what if I just keep rewriting songs over and over again and try to write a better version, like a sister version that would maybe somehow be better? Try, even if it's good, just keep doing that. And Lynn's has, you know, one of her many geniuses is she'll go, every band only really has like eight songs. They might have 80 songs in their catalog, but really, they sure. actually only have like eight songs. So, right. that, you know, eight, and that's a lot. <laughs> There's some that only have two or four. And they just keep rewriting that one song. Yeah. And not just bands like rappers or you know, whatever. And it's like, yeah. people rather than try to be, you know, and it's really, to me, it's about becoming just about being a better songwriter versus any type of like, I'm really trying to do, you know, work as myself as the tool versus like, you know, I'm writing, I'm not trying to write a hit. I'm just trying to become a better songwriter. And really, it's like this process thing. And I feel like, if I were trying to be like, okay, it's almost like manipulative maybe to be like, okay, I'm going to write the best hook ever. That's just going to be really like an earworm on people. It's like, no, it's all that process. And that's what I really, you know, I'm so stoked about going to, you know, truth or consequences. It's like the idea of like, it's not, you're not objectifying the art, you know, it's like, it's this process, you know, it's not product. Yeah. Awesome. Right. Well, and I also think that it's important. What's a, I find important in your work is that it's personal. It's individual. Um, it's like a person. Would you like to meet someone? <laughs> and every time you talk to them, they're like a different person. You know, it's, you know, I feel that in the same way, music is like that too, or art, visual art. It's like, it's an individual and it represents itself as a whole as a developed creature yeah. you know and like your process kind of allows for that to happen you know it's it's very it just is growing out of itself rather than oh i'm gonna do that style or i'm gonna copy this style you oh, know you're, yeah. you're right you're the root of the of the sound and as a duo you two are the root of that sound and you know does someone want to see Yanni one week and then the next week there's something, you know, totally different, you know, that, that, that is removed from who you are. You know, that's what I mean by that. Yeah. And there's almost like a level of intentionality about not being intentional. Like in what you're saying, it's like, this is the root of our authenticity is this is who we are. We're not trying to be this, that, or the other thing. And then right. Lynn's, we spend a tremendous, we spend a lot of time jamming and improvising, singing, improvising songs, if you get into that improvisational as like a mode of being, um, that's where like the, it gets very spiritual, it gets very real, because there's no hiding in the improvisational process, there's no hiding, and most yeah. of our songs are written in improvisational, because we record it, and that's the only way I even have the ability to play it a second time, is because right. we record it. Because uh, I almost all, all of our songs we don't even write down. Do you find that? Uh, do you do once you record it and then you look over it? Do you do much changing of structure or how do almost you? Almost none, if any. Okay. You know? And part of it is like because you get these peculiarities, and I'm really into um, wabi sabi as an aesthetic, where it's like the 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 you. You know, the strange curvatures, the, the places where it's not symmetrical, when it goes into a place you think it's not going to go, the odd chord, you know, like the thing that maybe, and Lindsay does this all the time, she'll go, oh, I loved it when you messed up that chord, it sounded great, because it's like, <laughs> that is where the magic happens, that is the yeah. novelty, and the creative act, you know, really is there, and I think that people need that stimulation you know what i mean they need to see like oh there's a new path oh there's something i haven't heard before even seeing right. somebody mess up like in a really dramatic like real way there's something quite satisfying <laughs> of that to me i'm like right oh, yeah this feels very real to me right 
Okay, like one time I was a, a security guard and I had I was working at this Christmas job and it was the festival of lights or something. And it's like, oh, okay, guard these Christmas trees. Just stand <laughs> here for like the whole day and stuff. And don't let anybody touch them. I'm like, okay. And then like, uh, I was like really like no phone, like going out of my mind, like bored and stuff. And then um, this lady came and I don't know what her, the person she was with, what their deal was or anything but she started like very slowly calmly elaborately like describing each detail and each difference of like each tree and I was like so into it because I had I was so starved for like any kind of stimulation (laughs) and then I was like oh my god stimulation was like everything all this beauty was here the whole time but I was in my shit attitude and this lady just started describing it and now I can see it (laughs) wow so are you comparing that to a live to 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 the experience of recording unplanned yeah, what you guys were talking about, it was what it was, was, was making me think of. I was like, oh, yeah, it's like yeah. that job I forgot I had. <laughs> yeah. How did you, when did you start playing drums, Lindsay? Was that, is that like your, uh, is that your instrument or you've played no, other instruments? I wanted to be married when I started and I had, I started on guitar and vocals and I wrote she the songs. She actually, I, she needs Yeah, no, I mean like I wanted person. to be, I and I did, I did the whole thing where I'm the front person, I'm I'm writing the songs here and I'm singing them and I'm playing the guitar and I'm in the middle. Look at me, I booked this show. I fucking know what's going on around here. And like, I did it. I lasted like about a year and uh, you know, I had my, and then like, I just couldn't keep, like I could, I did it for a year uh, and I just couldn't keep doing it. It just like, it's a lot, it's a lot. It's a, it's a whole lot. Uh, and um, a lot of it is super cool, you know, but. uh. So you must have also not found the fulfillment in that aspect of it. I felt like this is really cool to do and I just like can't a lot of it was the working uh working with people and being like yeah I just couldn't do it um for long I I really liked doing it and uh you know I don't like doing a whole lot for long like were you playing (laughs) were you playing drums before before that Oh yeah, sorry. Got, yeah, so no, I got yeah. Uh, okay, I got a drum set when I was like sixteen, and I okay. uh, and I took about five drum lessons, right? And it was like this guy. He was in a local band, and it was more about like, oh my god, is this a drummer from this local band, and he's gonna teach me? Yeah, like it was more about like I'm trying to talk to this guy. Uh, and I could not. I didn't understand. He's like showing me the books. I didn't know. I don't know what was going on. <laughs> but there's, these shapes, there's these like top hat shapes, and they and it means music. <laughs> what? <laughs> I can't yeah. make sense of this shit at all. But then, um, then another guy that it was like the same thing. It was like, yeah, that's like this whole thing. A lot of like my like music uh, lessons were like me trying to connive attention from a guy, but I'm like also education too. I'm like, you know, you could be my boyfriend and you could like teach me something. I could really learn from you. And uh, yeah, it worked. The, that guy, Ed, um, I could do drum. I was, you know, I was interested. I had the drum set. I went for it. I didn't, I didn't get it with the first, the five lessons that I, I got out of or whatever. But then this guy, Ed, who was in a punk band, um, he got me doing the kick drum. He got me doing a four, four beat. Okay. Yeah. He really put the time in. I really got it. And then once I got the four, four beat, it's like, all right, everything else is like, whatever you'll figure it out. It's just move your, move yeah. your and stuff. <laughs> Just move everything and it'll make a sound. You'll work it out. And do you have your your drum kit? Is it traditional? I thought you might have some other. Well, uh, it's the um uh it's the Quest Love kit. It's the the kit that he sells, and then the um the pick drum broke. 
So then it was like, well, I guess let's try it without the kick drum. And then I really do, even though I do miss the sound of it, and I miss that space being filled, I, I also really, it's like, I super love standing so much. And you I like that. Okay, that's what it was. Yeah. Because it's like, it's like your physical body is like so much and like how you like interact with the instrument and my gut is out of fucking control it's like my main it's like i feel like i'm wearing a barrel and like it really uh it affects my beats no doubt <laughs> I, love so I, I knew i knew there was something you know i i remember there was something different about your drumming and it was that you're standing i almost kind of envisioned that you had a different kind of kit which is a different kit without the bass and, <clears throat> and lucy is like cool. the front person as a drummer she's the lead drummer and I, I actually have had situations where I told people who like have been in and out of the scene because Lindsay's been playing in other bands for more than you know two decades probably at this point. Okay. And I would tell people who've been in and out of the scene for a while, and uh, I'd be like, "Oh yeah, um, remember the drummer from that other band? She's my drummer now." And they'd go like, "She's your drummer?" They're like, "She's crazy," and I said, "Yeah, I know." Yeah. <laughs> And it's just amazing <clears throat> side by side. And she does a lot of physicality stuff that I can't quite do because my both my hands, well, I guess both of our hands are busy. We both get pretty physical, but it's like, yeah, it's just incredible what. You know. So, Lindsay, you're singing back up? Vocals? Uh, a little bit. I mean, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's like sometimes, it's like, a, yeah, sometimes I'll use a mic. And okay. sometimes I won't. And uh, sometimes I'll like get this, uh, yeah, that front person shit like courses through me and I'm like, <laughs> and it's like, I think it's even almost like a flashback and I'll have like an idea or something and I'll be like, say some, say some stuff and I really get something out of it. I'm like, well, okay. And then, uh, but it's so people, Lindsay cracks people up. Like she's so funny and it's just like, even just, I love just like being in a band together, but then to see other people getting the get experience. Right. But so like, some, sometimes I don't got I don't got nothing. That's why I can't commit to the consistency of oh I'm gonna yeah front a band and do that. It's like some I can't like I can't sometimes sometimes I got it and sometimes I don't. <laughs> and then the the times I don't, I like to hey I like drumming enough where I'm like oh yeah just drumming good songs yeah that's that's fine that's enough. How about just right. because uh, let me hide out a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it's not it's, like a, it's not like a planned thing. Like I am the I am the front drum person. All right. Yeah. <laughs> but uh. And, and um, how about Mary? How does Lindsay's drumming approach? Ha, how has it influenced how you're writing and oh, what you're? Class, I write. When I'm not writing for Lindsay, it's just a, I use a different vocal style. I play in different chords, different. I mean, it's okay. But the thing is that um, I sometimes literally have to close my eye because I'll be laughing or like so entrenched in what Lindsay's doing on stage. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm laugh. It's so hard to laugh when you're like, or to sing when you're like about to laugh so right I'm like, this is what the world needs you know this is what i need this is i feel like such a positive thing to bring people because we do have heartfelt songs and stuff like that that are a little bit yeah different. But, you know i think we really do embrace the rainbow of, like having a bunch but Lindsay just brings so much to it that i couldn't you know on my own well it seems like you enjoy the process of playing you know oh. as as almost improvisation you know in terms of I never yeah, heard. something's happening there that you don't expect and, and you're enjoying it while you're doing it. Yeah, we have a good time. That's the main thing, you know. Um, I think this thing is saying we're about at a time. But I just okay. Thank you for your So time. April 19th at Artist Abbey. We don't have a time. It's probably going to be about 7 or so, okay. 7 o'clock, I would think. Two we'll talk about that. 
but so excited to have you both. So good to see you. Thank you so much. Can't wait to see you. All right. And, and you'll send me the link to this and I'll post it on yes, Facebook. Yes, I did it. Sure will. All, All right. right. Great talking. Day. Take care.